Hey everybody, welcome to the Tuesday Agent Mastermind call with Mr. Scott Hudspeth. How are you doing today, Scotty? I am doing very well, trying to stay warm. It's a little, uh, a little chilly up here. I'm actually coming to you guys from Plymouth, Michigan today. I got a dear friend flying in from Georgia. We're going to spend a couple of days together. I'm really excited about that. So if you're from Georgia and you guys know John Fortner, you guys know that he's going to be hanging out with me today and tomorrow. We're going to uh, just kind of do a little masterminding together. And I'm really, really excited about that. Great guy out of uh, Georgia. So if you're one of the agents on the call that works with John, um, he's going to be with me today. So that's Fantastic why he's with us guy, too. Talk. Great, yeah. great guy to hang out great with guy. as well. Yes. Just got some really good insight in yeah. in today's market. And so I, I love picking his brain when I get the opportunity. Hey, man. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good two days. Absolutely. Um, so the reason we're on the call, man, the reason we're on the call is Vicky comes to me and she's like, you know what, I would love to do a class on this. I think that... There is, um, I think this is more important than anything really that we do. I mean, we can talk about widgets, we can talk about organization, we can talk about structure, plan in place, but once we have all that stuff, I mean, clarity, there's all this stuff that we should have in our business, but if we don't take the time to follow the plan on a daily basis, we just go back into the same old routine, same old rat race, same old thing, same old thing that puts us back into like, God, I, I'm getting the same results, but I'm not doing anything different to get different results. So that's what we're here for today. We're going to talk about the seven steps for re, uh, successful real estate business. And this is, I literally scoured the web. I talked to a bunch of people. Vicki Rice is on the call with us today. She has worked with some of the top minds and agents. I call them minds because really, it's we're not really, I mean, would you agree with me, Paul or Vicki? We're not really real estate agents. We are marketers. If we just know that real estate is a byproduct of what we do, marketing is how we get buyers and sellers and FISBOs and expires and all that stuff, but really what we are is marketers, or we should be, and if we're not continually 100% marketing, then you know, we're going to have the ups and downs. There's no, there's no such thing as standing still. You're either moving forward or moving backwards. I, I firmly believe that if you're standing still, you're moving backwards, especially in this industry of changing so fast there's so much coming at us so Vicky can you hear us yeah. okay yeah can you guys hear me Mike keeps muting me I'm I'm perfect no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not muting right. you I told Mike what was going to happen next time <laughs> all right all right so yeah. um, um, I'm just going to start go ahead go ahead Vicky no I Actually, consultive. You know, I, it's a more like a real estate practice, and you're really consulting to um, that type of sales versus you know real estate sales. So if you can think of it in that way, that makes a, it gives you some more clarity or a different focus. For sure, it's just it's truly a mindset. So a couple of things before we get started. What I need you to do is let the past go. Don't let the past control you. I mean, everybody is always starting. Every day I get up, I go, okay, what am I going to do today to better what I have? So, and I can't look back and go, man, you know what, that didn't work, that didn't work, and I'm just not, I mean, you know what, maybe this isn't for me, you know. Attitude is everything. When somebody says, as soon as I get there, I go, no, when you get there, or if I get there, no, when you get there, it's just a whole different mindset. You have to tell yourself that you really, truly can do this. So attitude is everything. If you do not have the right attitude, you should first reprogram your mind with the attitude for success. Believe in yourself, um, and we're going to cover a lot of that. Too. Persistence is key. Never give up. I mean, every single day, I think I drive my team crazy because I bring to them another idea or another a step to the to this uh, you know the stairs to success. Go, hey guys, what about this? What about this? What about this? I'm never, I mean, I just can't shut that off. That's just who I am. So. I can't remember where I saw the quote from Scotty, but that persistence is key, never give up reminds me of it. It's, it's the quote is if you, if you fall down, when you, when you fall down, if you can look up, then you can get up and never oh, give up yeah, getting up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that great. always reminds yeah. me of that if That's if you fall point, down man. if I can still look up then I know that I can get up and and, and with that kind of an attitude you can always you know no matter what life brings at you what those diverse conditions are Correct. if you can look up you can get up and and you can push through it absolutely so one of the things we're going to focus on is your unique talents you need to enjoy if you don't enjoy what you do then why are you here, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I've talked to people that, have, hey, I've been in the same job 31 years, and I hate every single day. Guys, life is too short. We all have the same amount of time in a day. We all have 60 hours, you know, or 24 hours in a day. 60, 60 hours. hours in a day. <laughs> hours in a day. That's how many hours I work. So, 
you know, that's how I think. But so we're going to focus on the unique talent, focusing on what you truly love. And I'm going to do a little exercise with you. And then here's the big one. This is the hardest thing for anybody I've talked to you to do is de delegate, eliminate, or delete. And actually what I want to do is change this to reduce. So let me just go back here really quick and get this straight. I don't know why I have a hard time with them words, but delegate, reduce, or delete, okay? So that's where it is. Um, delegate, reduce, or delete. One of those things, and I'm going to show you which one of, which, how you figure out what you delegate, reduce, or delete all the time. Like every, every, every time you go, okay, should I be doing this? You got to think, okay, is this my unique talent in what I should be doing today? Okay. I absolutely right. love that slide as, or that part as well, Scotty, because you know when you can delegate, reduce, and delete things in your in in your daily life, you're now managing time much more efficiently. Look, it, when we talk about time management, I don't care how good at time management you are, there is no more than 24 hours in any single day. You can manage it to your heart's content, but you will never manage more than 24 hours in that day. So how do you get more done? You delegate, you reduce, and you, and, and you, you know, get rid of some of those things that you don't have to that you don't have to do. It's not part of what makes your business. You're not going to be out of business tomorrow if that doesn't happen. And right. so you manage your time. You manage the things that you need to do that make you the most amount of money. And when you can, when you can focus and when you can truly understand that that task is maybe they can only do it 80% as good as me, but that 80% is, is good enough to get the job done. And that leaves me to be able to do something else that is going to generate more revenue. Correct, correct. That is absolutely true. And we're gonna I wanna do a little exercise after the screen. So unique talent. What is your unique talent? And I ask this question all the time. What do you love about the business? And everybody ha there's no right or wrong answer here. Maybe you love working with buyers, you love working with sellers, you love um, helping short sales, you love working with you know, you love selling foreclosures, you love HUD, you love the paperwork. There's no right or wrong answer, but what do you love? That's what you need to find out. What gives you the most energy? What and it's so fun to talk with people and go, okay, what gives you the most energy? And then they start talking about it and like they sit up in their seat and their voice goes up and like they just like they start talking with their hands. That's what you need to focus on every single day and do every day, which just makes for a fun day. What makes you the happiest? What gives you the most fulfillment and brings them the most amount of value to the marketplace, okay? What brings a smile to your face? Certain things happen during the day that, that make you smile. Those are the things that I like to do all day long with, with people that like to do the same thing. So that's, that, I mean, that makes it fun, right? How much time are you spending on your unique talent? This is where I find that people, they, they kind of are, start moving backwards because they, they get busy and then they can't focus on their unique talent or what they truly love because they're having to do the things that they absolutely hate. Okay, so we're going to help you with that. What would your business look like if you spent more time on your unique talent? Not only what, what would your business look like, how would you feel, right? Successful right. agents spend 80% of their unique talent on a daily basis. Like, so, like, so like what I'm saying is they spend 20% of their time on the 80% that makes them their, their money, right? So, they, or excuse me, they spend 80% of their time on the 20% that makes them their money. So if you're doing what you love, what, you feel, what makes you feel good, what makes you smile, you're spe that, that's, that's what you need to be doing on a, a more regular basis. So let me just do a little exercise for you. So where's my little thing here? So if you take and really quick here, I'm going to draw four circles, okay? Four circles. And where these four circles intersect, or excuse me, three circles intersect, this, I mean, this is so important. I learned this like years and years and years ago, okay? And if you, if you really drill down, and we'll give you some ways to find out what this is, it makes you money. You love doing it. I'm just gonna put. I'm just gonna put a heart here. You love doing it. It makes you money, and you're good at it. Okay. So, in like for example, I love singing, but obviously, I'm not good at it, and it doesn't make me any money. But I love doing it. So it's like okay, that's that's not a really good example. But example, for example, I love working with buyers. I'm really good at it, and it makes me money that would be this little circle right here, right? It brings right. me the most fulfilling. It makes me the most happiest. That's where, that's where this all takes place. So these, I'm telling you, this thing right here, if you ask yourself when you're doing something, am I good at it? Do I love doing it? Does it make me money? Because if you don't, if say you hate doing the paperwork, 
it's only a matter of time before it's called burnout. You're going you're gonna to literally not do this other stuff because you know the paperwork follows. So you're just going to stop doing it. So what would it look like if you hired somebody just to do the paperwork? So you never had to touch a pencil. Would that be fun? That'd be good, right? If that was your, if that was your, the, your little circle here, okay? All right. right. So assistant, here's, here's the big question that I, that I like to ask people is, can you look your assistant in the eyes? If you can't, guess what? You are the assistant. What do you dislike about the business? What do you avoid or fail to do? Now, we one of the biggest things, and I don't know, oops, uh, no, discard. So one of the biggest things, and I'm going to see, is Eric on the call, guys? Let's see. I think that he's actually in, in attendees under my name. Oh, is he? Okay, okay. Um, Michael... I think it's just and my while, while you're trying to find um, Eric, um, yeah. Scott, I wanted to touch touch base about um, a really top-notch assistant is is really like a, a marriage for business. You know, I found that, you know, you spend a lot of time with that person. You know, you're, you, that person that has your back, you know, there's no secrets between the two of you um, in regards to business. You know, you kind of walk down, you know, a path together to make your business successful, enjoyable, <laughs> and possible. And so, like, when I had to leave an office, you know, it's like a divorce, you know, there's bad feelings, you know, and that kind of stuff. So it is, you know, kind of, you know, pulls on the heartstrings a little bit. So you really, you know, have to make sure that, you know, you pick the right assistant that's going to walk that path, you know, and think those same thoughts, you know, build you up when you're, you know, you're not feeling too great and vice versa. So. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to get Eric here on the phone in just a second here, so I apologize. But well, um, one thing that most people, not just not just real estate agents, not just loan officers, but the, the follow-up is, is one thing, but also calling leads is another thing. And, and here's the crazy part is if, you, if this is something you don't like to do, okay, so you don't like to follow up on leads. I mean, we work with a ton of real estate agents, who, and we have a ton of, like, Boomtown, Tiger Leads. There's a couple other ones that we work with. And the, literally, the leads are pouring through, okay? But the agent says, I, I, for some reason, can't find time in my day or just I'm not good at that part of it. So, wh so we hired someone specifically to do that job. And I'm telling you, this guy is incredible, and there's other people out there that that's just what they do. Eric, are you on the phone, man? Hello, Scotty. Hey, Eric, how you doing, man? Great. How are you? Good. So I appreciate you joining us. So just a couple questions, Eric. And you know, so so kind of like what we realized that that I'm good at what I do. I'm good at marketing, social media, helping agents, helping. And we have loan officers that are good at this. We have real estate agents that are good at this. But one of the things is like, okay. We just physically, it just literally, if, if I have to call a lead um, from an internet lead, I know this sounds as crazy, and I think a lot of people can relate to me, that it just doesn't happen. We may call one or two or three and go, okay, that didn't work. And maybe it's the fear of failure, the fear of a noun, they all said no, whatever it is. Eric, can you tell us really quick what you were averaging? And, and, and just to kind of set the stage, all Eric does is, I shouldn't say all he does, but one of the things that he does, his job is to call leads, and he is phenomenal at it. How did you come about, like, how did you get to that point, Eric, of, of and I know the answer to this, but I want to hear it from you. Well, uh, some of it's uh, a skill and desire I've acquired over time, but uh, essentially years ago, I was uh, between a rock and a hard place, and the quickest way I could figure out to make money was picking up the telephone. Okay. Um, so, and, and each job that I've had along the way has required me to do so, and it's been a part of every interview that I've had, whether it's been selling 401k plans, business, business to business, or uh, being sales manager with HSBC Bank. Um, I've had to either be involved in being on the phone or teach people to do it. Okay, so he, here's the thing. As a real estate agent, if you had somebody that did nothing but call leads that were coming in through one way or another, Eric, why don't you share with them how many leads you were getting per day that actually were approvable and would agree to meet with you before you start doing a couple other tasks? How, how many per day were you having coming in? 
I'm been getting about uh, just from like the, the the lead sources, the internet lead sources that we have. I've been getting about two and a half applications a day. That's about three hours of uh, telemarketing, and then three. the you uh, go ahead, Scott. No, three hours of telemarketing, two and a half uh, applications. So okay, so that's I think we figured out that was fifty per month, correct? Yes, fifty per month, and then about a third of those were uh, um, legit. Le legit loans that people could actually buy a home. Mm -hmm. Which I think the number was 19, 18 or 19 deals that could actually, people that could buy a loan that were searching online through one of these internet sites. So with the, with the other ones, what did you do with, the, I mean, what do you do with those? And I know the answer. To that. We, <laughs> I know, uh, we have a credit repair process and uh, the, the credit repair process is actually bearing fruit as well. Uh, there's a number of people that we started in the process six months ago that if they enroll in it, they're 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 getting the collections deleted. They're getting the bills paid down, and okay. we're having people come out of it scoring and turning into mortgages. Okay, so where I'm going with this, guys, is like so. It's not just one lead. When you get a lead, it's not. And here's the thing that has been huge, and I and I stress that you treat it like this. Even if, hey, Eric, man, I appreciate you coming on. I just wanted to share the importance of somebody that is specifically sitting there calling on leads that are coming in or following up with leads that, that came in or following up with applications that came in, that is all a part of, of the business that literally can catapult you into another category, right? I mean, it's just insane. So that's kind of where I want to go with that. Now, where I'm going now is if you had somebody in place to do that, like, it, for example, we're going to go over a couple ideas, like sending out handwritten postcards and all kinds of different stuff, but the other question you have to ask yourself is, if you're not making those calls, somebody else is. And if you just like literally, I don't know, worked through it to make those calls, to make, to build your database, what would your business look like in 90 days? If all you did was spend three hours a day on whatever your unique talent was working on your business, what would your business look like in 90 days? I mean, it'd be it's scary because I see the results, and that's that's the that's the fun part. So. Another thing you have to ask yourself, what makes you sweat just thinking about it? For me, it's what Eric just talked about, sitting there for three hours calling those leads. Okay, Now, it sounds crazy, but you, you all know if you've tried it, you know what I'm talking about. What would your business look like if you didn't have to do those things? If you didn't have to call the leads, you just knew that those leads were coming in. Leaves you free to focus on your unique talent. Okay? All right, so example of what you should be doing. Whoops. So like I just explained, what you need to do is you need to make a list of everything, like number one, Number two, number three, what you do all day long. I mean, I like make the coffee, I go get lunch, I answer the phone, I put out fires. I, I, mean, you, you, I mean, you guys know where I'm going. I mean, every single minute of every single day, you're doing something. I'm playing on Facebook, I'm talking on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Pinterest. Um, whatever you're doing, what, if you were to pick one thing, one thing that you, if you do that one thing, and if you don't do it, you're out of business in 90 days. What you know? So pick that one thing. So what? Calling back leads. Maybe it's following up with the past database. Maybe it's sending out this and like that. And then pick one other one. Not one, two, and three, but one, one, and one. Okay. If you're looking at like what your assistant could do, this is the biggest question I get asked. Go, Scott. If I hire an assistant, what should my assistant do? Well, here it is. You you make a list of stuff you do every single day, and this might take two, three, four, five days. But you come in, you go, all right, at 9 o'clock I did this, at 10 o'clock I did this, at 11 o'clock I did this, at 11.30 I did this, at 12 I did this. And then you go, all right, all day long, if I didn't do these three things, not one, two, and three, but one, one, and one, what? That, and you go, all right, I'm going to do this one, I'm going to do this one, I'm going to do this one. And guess what your assistant does? They do this one, 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 and they do this one. These three things are your unique talent. That is what, if you don't do it, you're good at it, it, you love doing it, and it makes you money, those are the three things, okay? So goals. Here's the big one I find, is I ask a, a ton of agents in a room, what does the next 12, what is the, if you were to look forward one year, okay, one year from now, February, what is it, 19th, 2014, what has to happen over the next 12 months that literally gets you up in the morning, February 19th, 2014, that has you looking back over the last 12 months and you're like, oh my God, that was the most amazing 12 months I've ever had. 
what has to happen. All right, I don't know what that I don't I don't know what that is because it's different for everybody and there's no right or wrong answer. You must look at those goals every single morning, like whatever it is. Say I want to close, I want to help three people get into homes every single month. Okay, what does that look like? And Vicky's going to talk about a bunch of stuff here in just a minute. You must have a vision, dreams, and visual reminder of your dreams every single day. I have mine on my desktop. Every time I open up my computer, guess what I see? I have my 12-month plan of what I'm going to do, what I'm going to focus on, what I'm not going to do, and what I'm going to delegate, delete, or reduce. Okay? You must focus on positive people. If you're hanging around people that are always negative, you guess what? You know, and God, who told me this? Somebody I said, <laughs> show, me, show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are. Right? I'll show, okay, Absolutely. Show me, show me your business partners, and I'll show you who you are. So yeah, are you hanging around? Birds of a feather huh? flock, flock together. Flock birds together. of a feather flock together. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. So if you're hanging around people that close three deals a month, guess what? You're going to be closing three deals a month if you focus and that is your dream or your goal or whatever. Um, the news. You have to turn off the news. There is nothing but negative news on TV, on the radio. Sometimes there's good stuff on the radio depending on who you listen to, but the TV is terrible for news. You may not think that that's hurting you, but emotionally it's hurting you. It, keep, it just it does something to your mind. Trust me on that. Media, self-talk, affirmations. One of the guys I literally, I watch a video his, at least two to three times a week, Gary Vay with the guy that, done, that does the um, Wine Library TV. The guy is amazing. He's so spot on with what my vision and passion and goals are. Find that person. Find that book. Find that auto recording. Find something that when you're not feeling it, you can plug it in, listen to it, or read it to bring you back to where you need to be. All right? Yeah, and I worked with a, a company, you know, out of Chicago, and they had a whole department that um, did nothing but provide us with tapes that we're supposed to listen to when we drive to work and when we go home. They provided, like, monthly, they would give us books that we had to read and then actually write a report on um, and, you know, all those kind of things. And you 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 start to, it sinks in, and it works. So Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so getting some good goals continued. So here's the thing, and they, got, they have to go in this order, or, or there, there is no order. So you have to have your health before you have anything else. Health, relationships, because if you don't have your health, your relationships are going to be poor, right? Finances, okay. business, and personal, they, I mean, they have to be in that order. Uh, most people that we do a survey, like what is, what is most important in your, in your life? Most people say relationships. They say finances, and then they go to business, and then they go to personal, and they leave this part out. I mean, I'm telling you, it's so, I, I, I literally put this up in front of myself because I'm like, all right, I have to get that part and, and have, make it first because then all the other stuff. I mean, you feel more energized. You have a harder time going to sleep because you have more energy. You um, Just everything kind of comes into play. So these are five important things that you put you know, in place, right? All right, so with your health, nothing else matters. Your relationship with your spouse, children, parents, friends, community, and spirit comes next. Your finances are more important than your income. Why? Because if you make 75000 net profit but spend 100 the solution is not to, to make 100 It's to look at, look at your finances, right? So um, right. your business will thrive only if you are calm with healthy, energy, loving relationships, and the big one here, relationships, in managed finances. Then you can have a time for personal hobbies and interests, okay? So right. here's, the another, here's the last question before we get into some good stuff. The perfect day. If you had to write down, and I, and I challenge you to do this, I challenge you to do this, and it's so, it's so in, in, I don't know, fulfilling. It's like what would... Or what does the perfect day look like to you in your business, in life, relationship, time with your kids, whatever it is? I don't know. Write that down. That would be a really good start to a goal. Uh -huh. And I would probably put that in there some way, shape, or form because the perfect day, you can really truly live this if you put the people in the right place to do the other stuff that makes your day perfect. All right? Right. Develop daily habits, rituals to maximize time spent on your unique talents and eliminate, delegate or delete. And eliminate, reduce, and delete. You must define the daily activities that generate income and move towards your goals. Successful people create daily habits and rituals. What does the end of the day look like today? 
Like for example, when you got up this morning, did you just go, all right, I'm going to see what happens. I have really have no, I have a couple of like, things I have to do, but I really don't know what I want the end of the day to look like. I'm telling you, it's a challenge, it's hard, but it's amazing how productive you are if you know exactly what you want to accomplish today. All right? Did you write it down? Go ahead, Vic. No, um, most of the, the people that I worked with, the, you know, the really successful ones, they had a schedule, and they never, ever veered from that. You know, every day they had a certain time that was booked out where they would make, they'd make their, out, you know, their calls, or they would return emails, or, you know, we have um, some that were really great with, um, you know, for sale by owners. So, you know, I would pull all that information together for them, but every single day, no matter what, you know, at a certain time, we knew that that was their, their time that's scheduled to work on their business. Um, some, you know, times were like 11 to 12 and 3 to 4. Um, but every day, those, that, was, that never changed, never, ever, ever changed. Correct, correct. Okay, looking forward one year, we talked about that. I challenge you to write your one year down. What does the next 12 months have to look like for you to wake up February 19th in the morning and go, oh my God, that was an amazing 12 months. I'm telling you, it's, the, it, it's a big challenge, but it also will keep you focused on, on what you should be doing on a daily basis, okay? All right, so focus. You must focus. Many entrepreneurs have a problem with focus. Here's, here's the hardest thing for everybody that I talk to. I shouldn't say everybody. You, everybody on the phone will not have this problem. I'm just giving you the power to not have this problem. And you might... Hey, can, I tell you, can I tell you a funny story? Absolutely. Um, at one, at one of the offices, um, you know, kind of had that open door policy. Um, and I was finding myself that I just wasn't getting everything done. You know, and you know me, it's like, you know, control here. Yeah. So um, I went and bought some headsets. <laughs> and so they weren't plugged into anything, but I let everyone know in the office that when my headsets were on, if I'm walking to the, you know, copier, or if I'm having to do a credential package or, you know, that's where I'm focused, so, you know, don't talk to me. <laughs> and it worked <laughs> great. So when my headsets were off and everyone knew that, you know, you know the door's open, go on in and, you know, but when those headsets were on, it's like Leave that was alone. my my way of letting everyone know without being, you know, without you know being making them feel you know uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, that, no, yeah. I have so to focus in. So me pulling that headset out of your ear is not a good thing, is what you're saying? Is that yeah. um, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I don't have to worry about it here, but yeah. All right, all right. So you know, and and people go, I'm a great multitasker. I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a good multitasker. What it's called. It's called uh, whatever you're focused on is focus deviation. I mean, you're trying to be, you're trying to figure out. Okay, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. So you're not doing a hundred percent of anything. You're doing half this, half that, half this. How many times have you got to the end of the day? You were going to send an email. You got interrupted, and the email's still like you, you pushed it down to the bottom of your toll bar, and it's still sitting there waiting to be sent. But you thought you sent it. I, I mean, I've done it before. That's because you have interruptions. So. What Vicky's saying is she bought a, you know, either shut your door and say, hey, don't bother me while my door's shut, or get headsets on when you're walking around. You can still walk around. You say, hey, don't ask me any questions. And, you know, I have from 9 until 11 that I need is my time, and I don't want to focus on anything else except for my, my unique talent, okay? It's the hardest thing to do. 60-hour work weeks, multi-to-do list. Poor eating habits, no exercise habits, no accounting habits, and I mean, just, just stop doing it. You must learn how to sit and do focused work. I'm telling you, for everybody in this business, it's just the way we're wired, you need to pick at least one hour a day where you turn off your phone, you turn off your email, you turn off your pop-ups, you work on your unique talent, and whatever that is, I said there's no right or wrong answer, it's whatever that is, it's going to help you have an amazing 12 months, February 19, 2014. You have to spend that time. Don't cancel it. I mean, we, we, I see people all the time, like they're million-dollar hours from 9 to 10, and they get an appointment, and they book it at 9 o'clock. No, I mean, you cannot do that. You have to book around it. Don't, don't cancel yourself out, okay? All right, so leverage. You must leverage your time so that one hour of your time can produce 10 hours of 100 hours of value for your business. Imagine that your time is worth $100 an hour, and you make six touching base calls to a client for 10 minutes. Every other month for a year, if you did this, you wouldn't have ever, you, you would have a recession proof business. And the client refers a new client or clients, which is worth 10,000 commissions. 
you just leveraged one hour of your time to be worth a hundred hours of your time. Does that make sense to everybody? That's one hour spent to make 10,000 in commissions, okay? Do you have to be the one? Now, here's what I added this. Do you have to be the one making that call? No. And I'm telling you, I work with some high-end producers. They're not the one making the call. Some are, some aren't. But if they're not, it's, hey, hey, this is Vicky with Scott's office. I'm just calling to check in, see how things are going, see, see, um, see hey, you're still in the market, you're not in the market. Are you, you know, hey, I see, how's your new home going? Have you talked to anybody in your friends, family, coworkers that's looking to buy a home? Just get to know them on a personal level, and I'm telling you, the referrals will come out of the woodworks. Mm -hmm. Stay in front of them. All right? What is your number? There's no right or wrong answer. How much money do you need to make and to maintain your lifestyle? Twelve months from now, how many deals do you have to close to be giddy about your business? Be honest. Write it down. Look at it often, and do the things that you are unique, that are your unique talents. All right? And that's huge, you know. Um, you did this, you know, and so I did. you it's like e expectations. What can we, you know, if we don't know what those expectations are, yeah. how are we ever going to measure up, you know, right. or even exceed them? So it's like a business plan. Basically, you're writing a business plan for your office. Um, and I used to go in and just like when I would go into an office, I was going to evaluate um, their yeah. strengths and weaknesses. I would go in and I would be like this fly on the wall, and I would set with all the different people in the office and just watch what they do for like about a week. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'd come back with an evaluation where, you know, um, and tell them, you know, you need to do this, or maybe we can cut this out, you know, bring these two departments together. But it's really a business plan, and once you put it on paper, and once everyone sees it, and then they, you know, and they buy into it, you know, then all of a sudden it's like, bam, everything just kind of you know, works plate. great. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So you must remove these thoughts. I mean, I, I talk to so many people. Maybe I'm in the real estate business, and they may not say it, but after talking to them for a little bit, they're like, "Yeah, I'm in it, but I'm not a hundred percent in." Maybe the market is too soft for the sales right now. Maybe I don't like all the stuff you have to do to be a successful real estate agent. Maybe I don't like social media. I mean, I hear you know I'm overwhelmed with all this stuff coming at me. Maybe you know maybe it's just maybe this just isn't for me. Maybe I don't want to share my personal life on, on the web. I've heard this several times from real estate agents going, I don't want to post what I'm doing on Facebook. I don't want to check in at the ski lodge when I go there with my family. I don't want people to know my personal life. That was a year ago. Now I've, I met that agent, and he's like, oh, my God. I started opening up like and sharing and letting people get like into my personal life, and it's yeah. amazing what has happened to my business. So, it is. Real estate has is 100% emotional and so you have to you have to get on with that you know you have to understand that that's what what are those trigger points and that make people connect with you and right. and they will work with you if they like you you know if you are someone that they would look, look up to um, they'd want to align themselves with you so yeah and you don't mm -hmm. have to do it on your personal page it can be on a business page Right. But you still have to show some, you know, some of your own personality. Mm -hmm. Correct. Interaction engagement. I met with, uh, quick story, I met with two agents, and they might even be on the call. I hope they are. They're great people. They both each closed $8 million in production last year. Great year. Fantastic year. Great money, right? So uh, she says, she goes, yeah, I just, I wish that I had a, a solution for the slow times. Like, wish, like, what should I be doing? so I can remove some of the slow times during, during the year. There's different times of the year that are a little slower than others. I said, are you connecting with, I mean, you closed $8 million. That's a lot of people that know, like, and trust you that would more than be happy to refer you, their friends, family, and coworkers. How are you staying in front of them on a weekly, monthly basis? We're not. I said, what if you sent a handwritten postcard to them once a month, every single one? It's going to cost you a very little money. And they will never, ever, ever forget about you. I'm telling you, if that's all you did on a monthly basis was send a handwritten, hey, just checking in, hope your spring is going well, or hope your winter's going well, uh, you know, hey, let me, let me know if there's anybody ever talking about, you know, real estate business. Or, hey, just, uh, just uh, pass by your house, just wanted to say hello, hope you're doing well, take care, talk to you soon. Little stuff like that doesn't need to be a professional postcard. You don't need to go get it made. Just little postcards at Walmart, handwritten, just just to say hi. I'm telling you, nobody does that, yeah. and they will never, I'm telling you, it touches people in a way. I mean, I get them from the people I work with. It's like, oh, my God, that just feels good. 
You remember that stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you're, um, and I've worked with, um, I keep saying what I've worked with, but I have worked with a lot of agents that have a fear because, you know, once they, they close the deal, they, they're done with it. And they're constantly going out there trying to, um, you know, get that next new client. You know, instead of spending the time and the money, you know, to, um, to connect with the people that know and like you already, um, it's just like a total pain of disconnect to try and get them to say, don't keep, you know, searching for more. You have a gold mine, so yeah, let's develop yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and let's put, a, let's put a marketing plan together so that if, if you have that fear of not wanting to pick up the phone, let's get someone in place like an Eric that can call, call your past clients and say, this is Eric from, you know, Scott Hudson's office. Just Scott wanted to make sure that everything's doing good. You know, we're here for you. Just, you know, I reach out and touch me, call five of them a day, and pretty soon you're through everything, you know. And, Absolutely. And they love you. Okay, so Vicki put this together for us. Hi. Um, yeah, here. Get um, yep. You see my yep. screen? Okay, so daily success rituals. Like, so these things that we've lined out here, the next two pages, are stuff that if you block out two hours of your day, I don't care what you do with the rest of the eight hours, ten hours. I mean, I always like to, you know, I, I always joked about putting a voicemail on, hey, I'm only working half day today, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., leave a message after tone, I'll get right back to you, right? That's what we mostly think is 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Well, if mm -hmm. you did these if you did these two hours, I don't even know if it would take you two hours. I think you, I think you put all this list together of stuff that you could do in an hour, right, Vicky? Yeah, I just did an hour of power. And hour this of all, power. This whole, yeah, this whole class came by because um, one of your agents um, said, and he has two assist, two assistants, but he did not know what to have his assistants do um, to change everything around in his office. So I got to thinking, and I just put together a list of what I want them to accomplish every day, you know, and this is where the class kind of came out, came from. Cool. So we're not saying this is the right list. We're not saying, but this is, I'm telling you, we see success with this stuff. So pick one of them, pick three of them, pick ten of them, whatever it is. Adapt your own to-do list. And all, all, all I'm asking is it, we want your success. If you're on this call, you're on this call because somebody wanted your success. We just want you to want it as bad as we want it for you. And it just right. makes everything else go better. So 10 to 15 minutes of posting on a social media site. So, for example, go to Facebook, go to your wall, find a friend, say, oh, my God, so, like, their, like their picture, comment on their post, comment, send them a private message. I mean, guys, if you, I don't know, I don't know if you know the power behind a private message on Facebook, that's, that's like me picking up the phone and giving you a call in today's social media world. It's like a right. private message. Nobody else sees it. It's like a conversation going back and forth, kind of like an email, but it's where people spend two to three hours a day, okay? Like clients and friends, pictures and posts. Can't tell you the power behind that. They will okay. love reciprocity. Can I interject on this one? Um, yeah, like, for example, the whole goal is to get them to like um, your post, share your post with their family, friends, and coworkers, comment on them, um, but, you know, it's it's – you have to do it first. So when you have a post that some comes from one of your friends, you do the same. You comment on it. You share it to your page. You know, so it's kind of, you know, it's like that give and take. Correct. Law of reciprocity kicks in, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Comment on your friend's current clients, your, your friend's post, current clients, and past clients. Be their friend. I'm telling you, if you think about one person, I mean, this is scary. One person, on average, has around 200 likes on their Facebook page. The average person, and this comes back from Zig Ziglar back, I don't know how many years ago, when he said, if you go, and, and I hate bringing this up, but if you go to someone's funeral, there's usually, on an average, of two to 250 people there. Same with Facebook, friends, family, coworkers. They have 200 to 250 friends. Are you connecting and engaging with those people on a friendship-type basis? Or is it just a business? Hey, it was so nice working with you. I'm never going to talk to you again. Congrats. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't let that go. Private message. Five people a day. Now, if you private messaged, you'd literally take you three minutes. You could copy and paste the same message if you wanted to. Private message five people a day just to say hello. Friends, past clients, current clients. 
Okay, I, I would recommend actually making the first phone call. If you have not touched base with your client um, base in, in, a, in say, Absolutely. six months, um, the first one you need to actually pick up the phone or someone from your office needs to pick up the phone and have a voice-to-voice -voice contact. Um, but after that happens, absolutely, you know, message them on Facebook. Yep. Five handwritten postcards a day. Reach out and touch your past clients. So what I'm saying is that it doesn't have to be elegant. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be. And I tell this story all the time. Zig Ziglar, number one car salesman in the world, still today, still holds the records. He would send a postcard to his people, and it would say, I like you. All right? That's that simple. He sold more cars than anybody in, in history over a short period of time. If you're into video, tip of the week video, uh, it's amazing the results that I have with putting a video out every single week. And Mike on the phone with me knows I had a client in the other day. I did a loan for her four years ago. She come in, she goes, and, and she comes in, she goes, hey, uh, I haven't gotten a video in the last couple of weeks. And I'm like, you didn't get the, she's, oh, yeah, yeah, I did get that one. Um, uh, it's all we talk about because it's just crazy videos, but it's the tip of the week video where I give them something that has to do with real life situations, and we'll do a video class on this so I can share this with you guys, but um, for example, you're sitting in the left-hand turning lane, and you got your wheel turned all the way to the left. What happens if you get hit from behind? It pushes you into oncoming traffic. So when you're sitting there in the left-hand turning lane, keep your wheels straight until you're ready to turn and then turn left in the left and turn lane. Hey, if you're looking to get into a new home because you're looking to grow, whatever, then I have a call to action. But now everybody that's sitting in the left-hand turning lane, guess who they're thinking about? Yeah. Do you know what I did last night? I made sloppy joes and I took buns and I put them on my toaster. You did I remembered you did it. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. And who did I think about? Even though I work with you, I thought about that. that I know. Video. I know. Oh, you're right. You're you're 100 percent right. It's, it's, it's so yeah. So the, the the other one I did was I put buns on a toaster. It's like you know after you shut off the grill and you come in late, maybe you're out in the pool or in the boat and you want to have a hot dog and there's you know you want to warm your buns. <laughs> you take the buns, you put them on the toaster, you push the toaster down. Within a couple minutes, you got warm buns. You don't have to worry about the grill anymore. So now anybody that ever has the uses the toaster or has yeah. to warm up the buns is going to think about me. So that's yeah, it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So, Vicki, you want to cover yeah. that? I mean, this list right here is insane. Yeah. So this is one of the the lists that I gave him that I wanted you know um, to do. And you know, I always talk about this big bubble of fear that some agents just they just you know they have that fear bubble. Um, and we, you know, um, it's either they don't want to give up control um, to delegate or to to do that, or they are afraid that the assistant is going to learn everything and then maybe leave them and take their clients with them. Um, so you know, the reality is, is is that you need someone to do these things for you. And if your assistant is treated like a true partner in your business, you know, they're going to be very loyal and they're not going to, to, um, to do anything that's going to sabotage you or take your clients and run with it um, because you picked that right person for that chair. Um, so I asked them if they would connect with um, five for sale by owners a day. Um, you know, I want them to um, you know look on Craigslist. I want them to drive by, um, check out on forsalebyowner.com, um, and do a strategy through eProperty sites. So I put together, and I think we've talked about it before in the presentation flipbook. You can do a, um, a for sale by owner strategy, and we did a postcard that just said check this link out, you know, whatever you want to do. And then they can mail that postcard to them um, and try to develop that relationship. So the same philosophy was done with expireds. Five for sale by owners, five expired. Um, they can always take those uh, postcards that I developed for them. And we do have a great lady in the resource, by the way, that has matched my postcards with Vistaprint um, and Scott can provide that information to you if you like. Absolutely. Um, we can do, you can do door hangers. I know you can't put them in the mailbox, but it's always results in advance. So again, we're going to that, con you know, you're being more of a consultant in, their biz in what they want, um, and you're providing them with a website and free access to your e-property sites for 
30 days or 45 days. The positives that's going to happen from that is you're going to develop a relationship with them. If they sell on their own by using your system, do you think that you're going to be their biggest fan? Are you going to be able to post you know, a broadcast my move on their Facebook page or have access to their friends, family, and coworkers for referrals? You bet. Um, and if you don't, if they don't sell in 30 days or 45 days, they've gotten a taste for what you've done for them in advance, and then you're more than, you know, you're going to get that listing because you've done such great stuff for them. Um, I ask them to post their current listings or borrowed listings, you know, um, from your broker on Fridays so that we can drive some traffic to your site. Um, I ask showed them how to do a property blog for every single listing that they have so that we can uh, track the buyers that are going to put in keywords into Google as well as making sure that their sellers know how their marketing efforts have helped them reach you know, Google exposure. Um, and I also ask them to send out on Monday um, a weekly uh, hits report from, from eProperty sites. That's a communication. You can connect with people, but you have to always have a communication um, follow-up system in place, too. And then, of course, doing broadcast my moves, you know, um, was, so this is, this is like, you know, a day or two or three that their assistant can do to drive traffic and bring business into their office. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. there's, a, um, there's a great question coming in by Judy, and I love this question. I think this uh, applies to more people. I think a lot of people just won't admit it, maybe. Um, so her question is, I'm a private person who was taught to uh, not be public about your life. What would mm -hmm. be some strategy to work with to get over these issues? Now, I don't know that you have to get over the issues. I think that there's ways to communicate on Facebook to not let the world know that. Um, Absolutely. So what you could do is you can create what they call, I think it's called a list or a group, um, mm -hmm. where when you make a post, it only goes to your, your closest friends, family, and coworkers, or past clients or clients. To, so, you, so when you post, you're only posting to them, and you would just choose, you would build that list under your people that like your page or are friends with you, and you would put them under a certain category. And then, like for example, let me just, let me just show you really quick, because I, I think this is important. Um, this is a little bit... Let's see, so like when, when I go to post on Facebook and everybody can see my screen, so if I go to post, see where it says public right here? I don't know that you have to necessarily show the, I mean, you don't have to show the world, but I think what you could do is instead of go public, you could be friend, you, like they could be your friends, friends except, uh -huh. uh, except acquaintances, only me, and then you could do even a custom where a custom would be a group of, here's a bunch of lists that they could be past clients, they could be current clients, they could you can just put people under friends. So when you post, only your friends, your close personal friends, see your post. So you could right. share what uh, what what what's going on, but but be more private about it than let the world see it. Does that make sense? Right, right, makes perfect sense. And also um, understanding that you know your Facebook page, great, is your personal page, obviously, but you don't have to do anything with that personal page. You, all you have to do is just have a login sign in, you know what I mean? And yeah. all your business is your business page. So you don't even post one thing personally about yourself. All you're doing is posting 80% engagement content, like, yeah. um, you know, quotes that you like or, you know, what's happening, you know, in your area, great events, and then 20% about business. And yep. none of that relates to, oh, I went to the store or, you know, stuff like that. So you don't have to post anything personal. But it gives you a presence out there because you never know where your clients going to come from. You know, they may enjoy Facebook and be on Facebook, but you may have another client that really likes Pinterest. You know, or it, you know they're on YouTube. You know what I mean? So you you do Absolutely. have to have a presence on each of them, but yeah. you know you don't have to um, you don't have to put anything personal out there at all. So another question here that I just love. Um, oh shoot, I lost who it was. Um, somebody asked, and I, and I apologize. I would use your name, but I lost it. What are some ideas of what to post on social media? So I yeah. I like to have a lot of fun with this. I like so. And, and one agent actually goes, "How do I incorporate all this social media stuff into into my daily routine?" I'm like, "Well, when you go to take a picture, open Facebook first, and then take a picture." You know. 
just know that by sharing what is going on, like I took, let me just show you, let me just show you one of the things I think that should be on my homepage that I just took before this call started. Um, let me just show you really quick. Well, another good thing to, to for people that are just getting started, you know, understanding the, that um, I, I try to let people know that I think of Facebook as a dinner party. Yeah. Um, I want people to come to my dinner party. I'm going to set them next to um, interesting people. Um, when they they're going to have great conversation, you know, we're going to have a really good meal. And when they leave, you know, hopefully they're going to invite me to their home um, right. to you know to have dinner. Facebook is not a place to you know um, talk religion or politics like a dinner party. You know, nor would you pass out your business cards as soon as you sat down. You know, next right. to someone. You know, you get to know that person, and then you find out, oh yeah, they're in real estate, and yes, we have these friends in common. So. That's kind of the way I relate with Facebook. Um, no, but, and, 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 and I'm going to give you. A, a, I would follow what, the. I would follow like Stacy, you know, yep, Jessica, Cobb, yep, you know, yep. follow all these people that you have access to here on Agent Mastermind with their and and more of what they do. You know, you can friend them and have them share. You can share their information like I do. You know, yeah. um, follow Scott. You know, follow me. You know. <laughs> You know, That's right. Just kind of go from there. So here's so here's just like so I'm always looking for something crazy, right? So th this I I literally posted this uh, less than an like before, like 15 minutes before class. So I'm looking I'm in a motel room, and I look at this Fiji water. And it's four dollars, and I'm like, okay, this is funny. And how much you is gas? Drink it. <laughs> let's hope they didn't figure out this. Let's hope they don't figure out how to make our cars run on natural. Artesian water, right? Because <laughs> this is yeah. uh, this is a uh, one liter. I don't know how many liters are in a gallon, but we would be in trouble, right? Twelve dollars a gallon. Scotty, did you get that out of the uh, mini bar? Uh, did <laughs> not. It was actually they put that right out on my table for me, and I did not drink it. Just so you know, I'm not that. I'm not crazy. I'll go down to the store and spend two bucks, right, <laughs> on water. But still, yeah. I mean, it's, so all right. So I'm gonna give you guys a little <laughs> thing. I I shared this with you last week. So if you go to let me just let me just put this on the PowerPoint, and I think this is important. So um, let's cover this first, and then I'll go into a little surprise because we're running out of time here. So don't have any listings. This is one of my favorites. So like, a lot of agents I talk to go, you know what, Scott? I would love to do all this stuff, but I don't have any listings. So how what what can I do? How about if you borrow listings from another agent? From your broker. Your broker. From your broker. Go to your broker. Yeah. It's crazy you want what you can do with mm -hmm. this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, so um, would you mind if I marketed your properties? Buyer leads are a good thing for everyone, right? It's a win-win. We had, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there, there, there isn't one agent that hasn't been able to get at least, uh, we had one agent that had 90 listings at the uh, end of like 60 days. We have one agent that had 30 listings. We had one that had 40-something. I mean, they just borrow them, and they give credit to where credit is due. We went to the Board of Realtors. We said, hey, what's the, what's the legit way to do this? We want to do this right. You just gotta say listed by listing provided by ABC Realty, okay? Whatever right. the listing company is, and and most agents would love to sell their properties because it's a win-win, right? And you, as an agent right. that has that, that borrowed these listings, now have buyer leads coming in. I mean, that's just a, that's a whole another that's a whole another class, but that's a great way to do it. So borrow them, and then find a system that you can market these things with, right? Okay. Right. Right. The last thing I want to give you is Animoto. Like I did this thing for uh, for a friend of mine, Wendy, yesterday. It's Animoto. You guys have to check this out. So one way to connect on social media. How do you know when it's someone's birthday? Like if I want to know if it's someone's birthday today, guess what? If I go to my homepage, and right over here on the right hand side, it says Michael Earl and five others. It's their birthday today. So if I see any close personal friends or people that are past clients or current clients. Oh Here's Scott, I see that that you wrote happy birthday on Michael's and <laughs> see that's another thing that um, your assistant can do. You know she, that person would come in Vicky, and that's do this secret. stuff for you. I did that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no, you did I not. did that. Vicky. You didn't do that. Okay, now okay. the cat is out of the bag. Okay, so I mean, but why not wish every one of your friends happy birthday every single day? It's right here, right? Okay, take it one step further. Why not do a video birthday for them? Here's one that I did yesterday. Let me just show you. Let me just go to my friend Wendy. She's an awesome person, by the way. She is. I love, love this new search thing. So Wendy Van Thompson. Yesterday was her birthday. You know what? I'm probably not going to find it because it's way down here. 
Uh, here we go. A special video for your birthday. Happy birthday, Wendy. And I used Animoto to do this, okay? Check this out. I'll expand this so you guys can see it. And you can even hear the sound. Now, is that cool? Now, where did I get these, like, like where's these pictures coming from? Now, where did I get them? Where do you guys think I got the pictures from? Guess what? If I go to Wendy's, mm -hmm. Wendy's thing and I click on photos, guess what right. comes up? Oh, Wendy. Here's Wendy's photo. I open it up and I go, all right, right click, save image as. Next. Right click, save image. Right click, save image. Right click, save image. Right click, save image. So, I mean, and then you go to Animoto. Animoto is an amazing service. You can actually, I, sh I was showing Vicky this the other day, it has an iPhone app. Get this. So and I'm going to show you guys this on the next class. It has an iPhone app. So I could literally stand in front of a house. I could walk through the house and take pictures and have a virtual tour video done on my iPhone. Is that crazy? So yeah. talk about creating yeah. something that's unique and cool for somebody. It's so easy to do. If you click on this little create button, follow the steps, and I'm telling you, if everybody could do this in their 30-second long videos, it costs you zero nothing zilch, okay? Uh, right. there's, a, there's so many things you could do with this. If you have an event that you go to, if you have an, a sports event, if you have a wedding you go to, I mean, there's a million different things you can do videos for, and they're 30 seconds unlimited. If you spend $54 for the whole year, I think it is, it's yeah. unlimited number and, of videos. And right there is information for you to put onto your YouTube channel. You know, no that's, question. That's, no not, question. that's not personal. So if you just did, um, if your assistant, you know, took and did an Animoto video, they posted to Craigslist, they did a property blog, you know, they posted on Facebook, you know, just a system that says one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, you're, you, you know, you're going to get so much um, exposure out there that right. there's nothing else that's going to happen other than more people to work for. And, you know, it's just, right. it's just, it's great. You know, it's just a way to, to get stuff done. Yep. Yep. So here's the Animoto. So you got, you have uh, three different steps. You have the insert photo and video, which if you mm -hmm. pick one of the templates, it has, it has music in it, so you don't even have to pick the the, the, um, the music. You customize your style, so you pick your template or whatever, and then you watch and share. It's it's just that simple. It's such an amazing, amazing system. So, um, Vicky, you want to cover this, and we'll kind of end with this, and I got a little surprise for them. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Also, um, I, I put together that postcard. I did a Pinterest, you know, on your board. Um, if, you, if everyone wants to follow Scott, there's a video marketing board, there is a Facebook timeline board, and then there's the new board, which I've uploaded those uh, postcards that I talked about that I did for them about for sale by owners and expired. So if anyone wants to copy, you know, they can take a look at them there. Sounds great. Okay. So basically, Assistance 101, you know, there's, you know, there's, most people have a little bit of right brain, left brain brain, creative, logical thinking, um, and there's some skills that you really want your assistant to have, um, and one of those is knowing about personal marketing and image building techniques. Um, they really need to know how to be a creative writer and, you know, really understand the basic software applications. You know, if they understand the basics, they can learn anything. Um, so. But the, a really good thing is that they have to be able to change. You know, there's some people that they want to do just that one thing, like a factory, and do that the same thing every single day, solitary day. They don't vary. They don't like change very often. But your personal assistant, you know, your office manager, the, the person that, you know, you're in partnership with, really needs to have a lot of these skills in one person. Um, so, and yes, you know, there are people, assistants, where that role for that chair is good because that's all they do. They do the same thing every single day. Um, you know, you want to make sure that person has, is calm, calming to both you as well as, you know, representing you, you know, to your, you know, buyers or to your sellers, um, that they understand facial expressions um, and emotions and how that all relates, you know, their tone of voice 
um, that kind of thing. And they need to be strong in administration um, skills, but also make sure that they're long-term going to be with you for the long-term because you're going to invest a lot of time and energy in building this business relationship. So you want to make sure that they're going to go the distance and you know they they work from priorities and they finish their tasks daily. Um, and one of the things I had agents ask me all the time is, where can I find these kind of people? Um, I was always personally recruited by other agents. Um, you know, so look to your real estate field right now. Find those really, really good people and, you know, go after them. Um, entice them to come and join you. Um, that would be my highly, you know, definitely a recommendation. But I also went and I went on and searched for assistance for people that I would be like a matchmaker kind of when I would go into helping them with an office. My first step was going to the banks and just, you know, kind of talking to the bank tellers. Legal assistance is uh, in the legal community is a great place to find that um, kind of a person. They work really, really long, long hours. Um, and so there's a lot of positives to being a real estate assistant. And so that, those are two great places to, to, to look at. Um, I also recommend it that, you know, when you hire someone, you do a 45-day review. You know, you don't want to go a 90-day because, you know, there's too much vested in, in that relationship. You want to get a good idea that, that it's a good fit for both of you, both for the assistant to make sure that they like you, the agent, and the office, but also, you know, to make sure that that person represents you and you like their um, integrity and their worth that they bring to you or, you know, to your business. Um, and real estate, yeah, the next one is um, pay. I know that the real estate office consistently have been a little bit lower than what you would normally find out there in the corporate world. Um, and usually between 10 and $14 an hour is the average. Um, a bank teller, and I just confirmed this yesterday, yes, the average is between $12 and $14 an hour, too. A legal assistant, you know, their average is around 48000 to sixty a year. Um, so it just depends on where you're at and what you can budget um, and afford. Now, um, you know, you have to understand, and this is what I talked with a lot of people, is realtors, when they hire assistants, you know, they keep them, everything's going great, 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 and then it gets slow, you know what I mean, Scott, kind of like November, December, January, then they let their assistants go, you know, and so um, you really don't, when you make a commitment like that, you know, you want to be in it, just like with, you know, a marriage, you know, you, you're, you're not going, you're just, you're not dating, there's a 100% commitment on that end, um, and so you really want to, um, make sure that that person can be with you and grow with you and you don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again. Um, and, you know, I, I also um, wanted to talk about an idea that I had that I personally worked on with an agent. This is a, as a buyer's agent, but this could also work within your office. I figured out, you know, I need to make a certain amount of money per year just to pay my living expenses, you know, my commitments. And, and understanding that your assistant is just like that. That's the reason why they're working is to get a paycheck. Otherwise, they would be a business owner themselves and take, you know, the risk to, to get the gain, you know, for a huge career. Um, so, so what I did is I said to this um, agent, yes, you know, this is my basic. At that time, it was $25,000 a year. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going, you pay me the $25,000 a year and that I can collect, you know, all the way through every two weeks. Um, and then when I bring in $25,000 of business to your office, I'm not going to collect any money on those, uh, those closings. You bank that in the bank that keeps paying me. So basically, I've paid for myself. And then, you know, when after I've met the 25000 which was probably like a, as a buyer's agent for me, it was like, you know, maybe March, um, at a closing, then I receive a certain percentage of closings. So have it be like a 50-50 or a 60-40, you know, whatever it is that you work on the split, you know, afterwards. So in reality, you could actually get an assistant, have that assistant 
pay for their own salary, you know, and then bonus them, you know, when it, when more you know deals come into your office. That was a great um, idea to go with if you don't have the budget to be able to do that, and you want to be able to get an assistant that is going to be a true partner in your business. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely, and that's yeah. what a couple people were asking: is like, what do they, you know, what do they do? How do they, how do you how do you compensate them? Maybe even if they have a benefits package and you don't, if you incentivize them enough to where they see the uh, the bonuses are going to overcome what they would could pay for health benefits, that's like kind of a no brainer. So uh, um, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's different types of assistants. You know, you have your main your main person. Um, um, that's your personal assistant or your office manager, um, right. and you know, and then you have a buyer's agent that works yes. strictly with your buyers. Um, and, and when I was a buyer's agent, um, my my duties looked like Saturday and Sunday I did two to three open houses a day. That was a business day for me. That means nine until five, or you know, until ten. <laughs> um, then Monday was my day to um, connect with everyone, give the reports out to everybody, uh, making sure the sellers knew the traffic that came in and what comments there were, sending out my postcards, my thank yous for follow-up. Um, and then um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays were filled with showings, you know, and then Thursdays and Fridays was my day off. So it's a really, you know, great workable plan if you are systemized and um, you have everything down. Now. I would also do their marketing and their image building um, as well. So you can you can combine, you know, different departments until you get to the point where you're so busy where all you're doing is working with buyers. Um, and then the telemarketing, like um, Eric, for example, you know, that could be a person that calls all of your past clients on a regular basis. You know, um, calls on for sale by owners, does the expired. You know, so you that's that would be like an a thing that you don't like to do, then you can get someone like Eric to do that thing. Um, yeah, and then a, a closing coordinator and a listing coordinator. That means once you've done the the money, and I used to make sure that that all of my agents only work on high profit dollar income stuff. Um, that offer that you wrote or that listing that you took then gets turned over to a coordinator who then takes it and goes the distance you know, they do everything that needs to be done with it. You don't touch it ever again, you know, until you get noticed that it's time for a closing. Awesome. You know. Awesome, yeah. Vicki. So, uh, yeah. so coming up on our time, a couple things really quick. I got a book up on the screen that was uh, introduced to me and was given to me, actually. And this, this is a book that is really good about, it's called The Breakthrough Company. And the reason it's so cool is they went around and interviewed 7,000 companies that um, and they find out why did some succeed when when others failed. Um, so what what they did was like like they would grow and grow and grow, and then at a certain point they would they would fail. So what you're going to find out is what it took for companies to keep growing, and really what it talks about is what we just covered here is finding the right people to do the things that you don't like, and only focusing on your unique talent. And this book kind of really hits home there. And it shows you this is like like all small companies, like 7,000 companies, mostly in the U.S. And it, it, you, as yourself, are your own company, and you can relate to the ethics and morals and, and backings of these guys, what they talk about here. So it's about 12 bucks if you go to Amazon. Just, just, just look for the breakthrough company. And then the last thing I want to do really quick is give you guys an amazing tool if you missed it last week. Um, the uh, little little bonus that I want to give you guys one, two things. One is one is uh, let me just see if I can get is our Facebook group. If you if you're new for the first time, we have a Facebook group. It's called facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind, and that is number one. Number two is the big surprise. This is really cool. You're gonna love this. Budgirl.com forward slash big surprise and where this goes is let me just show you this really quick so the buddyroll.com forward slash big surprise it's if you look at this this is what comes up and you want to find a topic to write about that has to do with home repair all right so you put in home repair under the word doc now what this is going to do is find all this stuff in google that is word doc 
here's a PowerPoint, excuse me, PDF. Here's an Excel spreadsheet. Here's a PowerPoint presentation. So home repair, you want an article on home repair, okay? You click go, and you're going to notice that it says doc, 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 doc. These are all documents of people that have written Word documents. Then if you want, you can take the home document. It downloads it to your computer, and it, there's unlimited amount of context. So search whatever you want to search, and you will find documents that have to do with whatever the topic is you search for, okay? Might be the right one, might not. Um, you have to look through it, but here's all kinds of stuff that people put out on the web, and I have no idea how it gets there, but it's an amazing tool to allow you to search for whatever kind of content you want that might give you an idea of what to post on onto your social media sites. The group that we talk about is if you have a question about anything we cover ever throughout the whole year, this is a private group. If you ask a question, only the people in the group will see it, and only the people in the group can respond. And more than likely, you're going to get advice from top agents all across the U.S. There's as uh, we're over 900 now on that group. Let me just close this out. Let me just show you. Um, it's a lot of fun working with you guys, sharing the good ideas, what's working, what's not. And uh, it's hidden from me here, so I've got to go look for it. And, Paul, is there any questions that came to mind that you're looking, that you're seeing? I don't know if you're still there. The number one question that keeps coming through is how do I get access to the PowerPoint <clears throat> and some of the, some of the stuff? Um, guys, the, the loan officer that invited you today is going to have access to the recording and to the presentation materials. All you've got to do to get access to it is just contact the loan professional who invited you today. They'll be more than happy to provide you with the recording as well as the PowerPoint for the scripts and everything. Um, if you didn't get a chance to write down Scotty's Pinterest page um, with the links to his boards to see some of the things that they're doing with postcards and whatnot, they'll be able to get you those links um, to get you access to all the materials that you saw today. Just contact the loan professional who invited you. They're sponsoring you here because they're looking to grow relationships um, and, and help each other and find accountability partners and people that they can help help them grow their business and in turn grow their business as well. So just contact those loan professionals. They're more than willing to help you with the things that you need, whether Absolutely. it be materials from some of these presentations or additional, if you have questions that you don't know the answer to and maybe we didn't cover it, they can typically get those answers for you by tapping into the resource here at the at the animal shop. So All right, that's cool. the main question coming through, Scotty. Okay, um, good. Good. You answered that. So here's another thing real quick. I want to, and I think this is huge. So if you want to know how to put your friends, the personal groups or set up personal list, all you do is you go to your main page, click on your picture, go to your main page, click on friends. And then you'll notice where it says friends right here. You'll scroll down just a little bit. And it says close friends, acquaintances, add to another list. If I click on it, it'll open up a, a, a whole bunch of other lists, or you can create your own. See that if you scroll to the very bottom, it says new list. So you can have friends, family, wedding party. If you want to have all these friends as part of your wedding party, because you're gonna, you know, interact and engage over the next however many years. Um, that's how you do that. So we'll be doing more on Facebook because it's a huge topic. It's a huge, uh, Stacy Staub, we got to maybe try to get her back on. She, she closes 30, 40 million, 50 million a year, and 30% of her business comes from Facebook. It's just, and really what it boils down to is building deep relationships that you interact and engage with on a, on a very often basis. So that's how you do it. You click on friends, click on the friend, uh, friends tab, and then scroll down um, or go back to the list and add them that way. So Stacy Staub. Yeah, one thing I did forget to talk about was event marketing. We probably should do a class on that. Um, okay. You know, event marketing would be similar to like, you know, like um, I have an agent that does great with around Halloween where they'll do a Halloween costume, um, you know, contest and they invite the um, judges to be from the news anchors, you know, and fun stuff like that, you know, and right. that is a great way of marketing too. And you have, we have several agents that, do, do event out marketing, big, absolutely. Yeah, That'd to be do a out great big uh, jump places or they'll do a water slide, you know. That'd be a great like one. That. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. That'd be great a great idea, Vicky. That'd be a great classy. All right, so join our group. Go to the big surprise. Play around with that. That's an insane. I don't know who put that together, but keep it a secret between us. And uh, Paul, I appreciate you, brother. Vicky, as always, amazing stuff. Thank you for bringing this up. And a lot. we had a record-breaking class today, so huge number of people today and a lot of compliments coming in so thank you very much 
uh, Vicki, as okay. always. Yeah, thanks. And uh, every week, Tuesday, 12 o'clock, we'll see you here. Uh, be safe, and uh, please do me a favor and book out an hour of your own time to work on your business, but after you write your one-year statement and put down there exactly what you want to accomplish over the next 12 months, okay? Yeah, and Maria Robinson says nobody can go back, but they can start a new beginning. Absolutely. But everybody can start today and make it a new ending. So Love it. With that, Love thank that. you guys Woo. so much. Okay. Thank you, right. wow. thank you Vicki. You right. You're welcome. Always, You're always welcome. a pleasure to get and to listen to your knowledge. I love it so much. Thank you so much again. Thanks. Okay, guys. Have a great day. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Paul. Talk to you soon, boy. See you, man. Yeah, bye. The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.